is here in Salt Lake City, and it is known as Championship Sunday. And if the weekend hasn't been crazy enough, produced enough incredible series for us to enjoy as Halo fans. Well, today we start off with the Classico. We've got Optic versus FaZe, the perfect way to start off a Sunday. It really is. It's unbelievable we get these two teams this early on in the elimination semifinals. You wouldn't expect to see these two matching up here, but we have a special treat to kick off the day. It's Optic versus FaZe. Of course, the last two teams, last time, excuse me, these two teams met up, Andy, was quite a time ago now. Back in Charlotte, a crazy grand final, one of the best grand finals that we've seen in Halo, Halo Infinite for sure, and that went all all the way down to a game seven and just a few kills separating the teams. Yeah, it's wild. If you'll remember back to Charlotte, of course, one kill separating them in a game seven. It kicked off a pretty exciting year and a continuation of a pretty exciting rivalry. However, things have really changed since. Of course, FaZe now on back-to-back -back victories. Optic has not looked as strong as of late. However, now they will need to go through one another to advance on. And if you ask either team, probably at the start of the tournament, who would you love to eliminate? They probably answer with each other as we head into game one. So the bad blood certainly still there between these two teams. But it's gonna be King of the Hill to start things off here on the new map, Solitude. Face versus Optic. The perfect way to start your Sunday. It really is here. Do or die for these teams. Three dead off the opening for the side of FaZe. APG is your last player Ooh. alive. He was the last player alive. Frosty keeps them three dead. And it's a solid opening strategy coming in from FaZe. Frosty looking like he's ready to take on Sunday and try and push FaZe towards another grand final, but a long road for them to go through. Of course, with a somewhat of a surprise result against Sentinels that we saw, that 0-3 not putting a map on the board. They've had to go back to the drawing board overnight to think about how that rematch might go, but before they get there, of course, they've got to go through Optic. Look at the Slays here right now. Seven to two in the Slay category, starting off with FaZe with the lead. It's a little bit late scoring here. QT in the hands of Frosty. Let's see how he plays this one. He's melted before he can even use it. Yeah, aggressive play there. Stood in the middle of the hill. Exposed to all the optic players coming off that respawn with the sniper. And now you're going to see off the back of the first kill, phase four, three dead. Frosty just coming off the respawn and APG. Trying to chop him over at Snipe Tower by the looks of things here off the respawn. Optic Gaming inside of that hill. We have a tight game. Tied game and Optic Gaming actually is going to inch into the lead here. And you have to think with all the openings and all the opportunities that phase had, in the opening break, it should have been more points on the board. However, Optic now takes the lead in the first hill and it's still too dead. APG still inside this hill. Hasn't taken any damage whatsoever. Finally, Royal 2 gonna challenge, wow. but APG accepts, puts him on his back. As now we have a 2v2 on the map. Great shots from Renegade though onto a, a thrusting formal and that will even the numbers up for just a few seconds. Crispy shots indeed. Talked about Optic's weekend and Let's not forget, just in case you missed it, they barely got here to Championship Sunday. Last night, they had to put together a Herculean, unbelievable comeback in a Game 5 Slayer to even get to Championship Sunday, trailing by about 13 kills or so. But they've done the job. They've made it to Sunday. Now the question is, what will they bring here in their first matchup against FaZe? Too full for Optic here, but they have got around 60% of that hill already on their side. Maybe even more at that point. As now we see... Face trying to step inside of that hill, but Optic are doing a really good job of pressurizing whoever's in that hill immediately, making sure there's no free hill time for Optic to pick up. And now you're seeing Renegade having to deal with that hill player again. Bandit in hand, APG challenging. APG will win that one. No use of the QT there from Formal inside of that hill, but he was so good with that yesterday, just dancing around top and bottom middle. It really was. Interesting play there because Renegade just kind of nades top middle there preventatively, but Formal's QT was placed on the exact spot of the nade, so Formal not essentially taking full advantage of the distance that can be created by the QT there. First hill will go to Optic. Pretty conclusively as well. Even though the slays early on were all in the favor of FaZe, Optic managed to regain and managed just about get the amount of slaves they needed to to keep FaZe at bay. Very strong start from them. Sniper's gonna be picked up once again here by FaZe. Now, Optic 2 dead. FaZe need to try and break onto this driveway hill. Kill still just in the favor of FaZe here. It's so interesting to see Optic do so well on that first hill. Three dead here though. Trippy's your last player alive! Oh, he's not on anymore. the light rifle tunnel gets taken down. He is not anymore. What a shot that is from Renegade. Trippy, shoulder peeking, just showed the visor for long enough for Renegade to have that reaction time to snap onto it and remove it. As Formal will just even things up a little bit here. But I mean, for all the slays and all the good work you're seeing from FaZe, it's not turning into objective time here, Andy. They're not going to be able to get near that hill. The swans keep coming in, in and around that hill for Optic Gaming. And they're just happily gathering it up and giving themselves even more of a lead. Renegade somehow stays alive there. A little bit of miscommunication coming in. Finally, he's taken down three dead again. Trippy's your last player alive, but I, I couldn't agree more here. Now that we're on the driveway hill, a little bit of objective inefficiency coming in from FaZe. 
And that's always the worry for FaZe, right? We always talk about that, but Frosty winning a battle like that against Lucid is going to give them just a little bit of space to work with. We know how good FaZe are when it comes to getting kills. Some of the most talented players you could ever see. And there's another indication of it from Frosty. A beautiful double kill from him. And now inside of that hill, Optic have kind of woken FaZe up and said, hey, it's great that you're getting these kills, but now you need to get objective as well. That's right, now with this wake-up call here tied on our second hill. Let's get into a listen in with face plan. It's two blue chuck weak, two blue chuck weak. Blue window, blue window. Yeah, make sure we push up right here. Blue window, blue, chuck. blue window, blue window just full shelling. I'm on hit, John, okay? Go, I go bottom mid, you turn, bottom mid, you turn. Yep, yep. John, I'm going glass in a second. S4, John, S4, John, John, I am one hit. S4. Checking yard, Brad, checking yard. Yeah. Yo, you drive away, drive away, drive away. Front alert, front alert. Hey, you're done. Another one bottom mid. I'm just stacking with you guys. Two, two, two. Child, child, child. Watch out, front alert. He's like front alert. One in, one in, one in. He's gonna be behind us. Yeah, he's looping. He's already got it. So play that kill. Play that kill. I just saw it. It's weak, weak bottom mid. Keep it up, boys. Okay, let's go. Really good, really good. He's in hill. Once Luke, there. there's one. I think he went top goal. It's trippy, Don. It's trippy. Playing for this. We play for this kill. Remember, once, 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 Hey, sorry, I'm going bottom mid, okay? Hey. Hill guy weak. Yeah, uh, and alert, and alert. Yeah, blue. Hotel, hotel, hotel. Two dipped, guys. Alert, guys. Alert, alert, alert. 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 GP1, watch our alert. He's one alert. hit, John, still. Alert. Oh, you killed me, fuck. He's watch our alert, watch our alert on the, on the box. Harder deaths, guys. They're all, yeah. he's the alert on the mat running. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just live, just live, just live. Just live. Yeah, remember? Just winner, just winner, man. fucking, you want to hit? Well, the game up in that listening, but trippy, I mean. He just got a little one up on Deacon Renegade with that kill. Oh boy, you heard the reaction in the room there. Undoubtedly, as everyone said the same thing that we did, Trippy somehow with a little bit of a nice kill there on the LR glass to get that unexpected back whack. And Optic Gaming now uncontested on our third hill. Uncontested, and I tell you what, Trippy is playing with confidence right now. Oh, yeah. He is winning everything. And it's so funny how one kill could completely change just the focus of a player. He feels unkillable right now. Trippy with a fadeaway jumper, taking a look at this hill. Uncontested once again. Optic Gaming take the lead without any rebuttal coming in from FaZe Clan. Two to one now, two minutes on the clock. Not only have they won the hill and put themselves in the lead, they have rotated perfectly to this snipe hill as well. They're gonna get not only control of early hill time, but Formal gets that sniper rifle as well. And he's already in the kill feed, picking up two. FaZe are stuck in tram at the moment. Three dead waiting for respawns and Formal is just hunting. Look at him now, just driveway angles, playing really sneaky here, gonna rotate to hotel. Based on this info, they know the push is not coming here. They'll have all the information they need and just takes to the skies for some cheeky angles. Doesn't matter though, look at the hill. Uncontested again. Optic might get this one clean yet again. But he's gonna make a play here. Optic, they've just got to hold. Snake bite has his shields removed. Question is, will Royal 2 and Renegade have their heads removed? As Formal tries to line it up, and Optic playing this one perfectly. They know they don't have to do too much. They could just wait for damage to come in and then try and capitalize. They have the early hill time, but it looks like FaZe finally gets some kills and get near that objective. One for one trade there. We'll see what Lucid does here. QT was up top. Middle has one thrust to play with as well. Two dead still for FaZe. Trippy gets that kill as well. Renegade has to challenge, but where is the hill time? Can Trippy beat him there? Oh, Trippy with a beautiful no scope is going to deny the push. Coming in from FaZe again, and with one bullet, he might have just secure the third hill here for Optic. Oh my god, beautifully done from Trippy. Take a look. He's going to pop in. That's going to be a free hill to close it out. Optic takes the lead three to one. Look at the confidence out of Trippy to just lift, hit the body shop there on the posters, wait for the kill to be cleaned up. And oh then, my Joey! This man is feeling himself this morning. A one kill that just gave him the confidence to take over this game. Trippy is playing some special Halo. You knew the repulse was going to come out and buy him some extra time. And of course, the assist comes in as well. Oh, 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 oh. This is a patient man who knows that help is on the oh, way. He goodness. picks up another one as well. Trippy's having the time of his life right now. He's playing with FaZe with three dead. Renegade, the last alive. In the hotel, Trippy's gonna make the play onto him. Has that repulse to just buy a little bit more time to wait for the help? There is the help from APG. Optic are working so well together at the they, moment. They call him the concierge, cleans out the hotel very easily, <laughs> gets all the help he needs. Hotel staff is on deck. It now belongs to Optic Gaming. 55 seconds left on the clock, and they lead three to one. This will now just be a defensive effort from Optic Gaming. Trippy just being obnoxious. Renegade trying to challenge. Trippy is just being a problem. Finally, Royal 2 with a double kill will stop the spree that came in from Trippy. And FaZe have a semblance of map control for the first time in what feels like nearly two minutes. But Lucid, again, just picks up that one kill. The QT goes over to Formal. And like we mentioned yesterday, this man knows how to use this thing. Look at this beautiful. Immediately QTs, he's going to go right away go back. Beautifully done here. I love how he places it down immediately. 29 seconds left of defense for Optic Gaming. FaZe already with one in the death screen. And with Snakebite about to fall as well, you would imagine, although he does manage to escape. 
Form will now just have to contest the hill. He has the QT still, but can't hit it quick enough as Royal 2 will get that kill. Phase closing in on 50% of this hill, but the clock is the problem here, Andy. As you can see, 25 seconds left in the game. FaZe need to make this a perfect hill. It's a huge problem. It's not impossible, but now with a two hill lead, makes it very, very difficult. It would need to be an unbelievable run here on both hills from FaZe if they want to close this oh. out with kills like that and with three dead. This should be Optic Gaming closing it out here. Four, we're going to get straight out of that hill. He's watching that clock tick down second by second. 10 seconds left now for Optic to hold off FaZe. It's looking like this game is done and dusted. Optic, they've come to play today. They will go up one to zero in this series. It's a three to one win in King of the Hill. And what initially looked like it might be phase control early on with back to back three deads and then some in the end becomes an Optic win and a conclusive one on the board in Solitude King of the Hill. They'll take a one to zero series lead. Got to talk about Trippy. Got to talk about Big Game Trip. This man, when it matters for Optic Gaming, has been the player of the last few events who has stepped up. Even when things have looked a little bit difficult for them in some tough series, you're always looking towards Trippy and what he can do for Optic. And once again, some of the plays he was making in that game, especially that little run around the Snipe Tower on that Snipe Hill, that just locked it down for Optic. It was one man doing the work. Yeah, two big standout plays there from Trip. I agree. That play where he hits the body shot there, clean on posters, and they clean it up. Also had the patience at S1. And also, let's not forget his little ring around the rosy back whack there on Light Rifle against Renegade, which was also just a mental victory. If we're honest, look at Formal. 22 and 14. Big numbers on the board. If that's the way Formal start in Championship Sunday, Optic fans might have something special in store. Yeah, and I mean, we can go right back to the start of the game here and. Whenever we talk about FaZe and when they lose games, it's usually because they're trying to do too much a lot of the time, right? And you saw the hot start they got out to, they had control of the hill, they had kill after kill after kill, but it's just nobody was taking the responsibility to step in that hill. And as simple as it sounds, it really can translate into something that's like, hey, is our, our comms off or where somebody not taking the responsibility? And it takes your focus off the game for those few seconds. Optic took that opportunity, stole that first hill away, and then Trippy, I think, like the game changing kill, like you mentioned, from that Trippy really did catch fire. And Face didn't really have an answer. They didn't. And one thing that was very interesting was to take a look at some highlights from that game is Face's listen ins otherwise were pretty good, right? When you, for example, we were with Renegade and he's in Tram. They say, let's find our first kill. They find it on glass. They, they knew what they needed to do, but I think Optic, more times than not, is making sure that even when that opening damage comes in, that Face is not able to find that first kill. And that's a very tricky first kill. That first kill always seems to elude them. And in the end, Optic just plays off of that damage. They play off the mind games. Yeah, and it's even more difficult when you've got Formal doing what he did with that QT as well. He is so good. And I feel like he's one of the players who seems to have mastered it most at the moment, always hiding that port to make sure that when he is escaping from that initial battle, that he's not going to be cleaned up immediately. The rest of Optic are good, in good positions to help him stay alive. And by doing so, they find themselves one up in the series. Next up, though, is Slayer Recharge. And this is one that we have seen FaZe be pretty strong on throughout the season so far. Yeah, it's going to be good to see these two going up against this map. Of course, having it back in the rotation after Arlington. We'll take a look at some Slayer staff between the two here at HCS Salt Lake City so far. Pretty similar winning records here for both sides. Phase Clan 4 and 2, and Optic Gaming 6 and 3. It looks like when Phase win, though, they win big. That's the difference, right? It's 7 point plus 7.8, excuse me, the margin of victory for them. Whereas Optic, we've seen them in a couple of squeaky game fives. No surprise yes. to see them with a little bit of a lower average margin. But to be honest, it could be 0 0.1. As long as you're winning the game, it doesn't really matter. And Optic are going to have to keep that in mind and kind of take some of those situations they found themselves in, those intense Game 5 situations, and play the same way here in Game 2. Because if they do, Andy, it's a 2-0 lead. And FaZe will be thinking, oh, no, this is this is the deep waters for us. Absolutely. Let's not forget, it was less than 18 hours ago where Optic was on, right on our main broadcast, playing against Native Red in an unexpected Game 5, fighting for their lives down by 13 on a live Fire Slayer, and they rally it back. You have to think Optic Gaming, as you alluded to, is going to take lessons from that. And hey, let's make sure at all costs we do not get ourselves into a situation like that again. Well, Slayer has been something that's been good for FaZe. We always talk about their Game 5, Game 7 Slayers. When it really matters, the iciest team that we have in the Halo Championship Series always find a way to win. Well, you feel like the pressure of the fact this is an elimination bracket game as well. You know, whoever loses this series is going home, by the way. They're not going to even think about going towards that grand final. Well, they need to put that Game 5 high pressure situation into a game two now they need to treat this like it could be their last game in the tournament tie it up at one to one and put the pressure back onto the green wall they really do and that's what phase fans are going to be expecting right let's not forget phase is a back-to-back -back champion right now what they're looking to do here is match the record set 
by Optic Gaming here. If they do so, they will 3 peat and they will match the record set, as we said, by Optic last season. Looks like the match is going to be restarted here, so a little bit of a false start on the main stage. However, like we said, to have this matchup do or die between these two, it almost feels criminal that we will lose FaZe or Optic in the elimination semifinals. You might make the argument that because these teams were not playing at 100% throughout Friday and Saturday, that they've put themselves in a situation now where they're going up against an old-time rival, a long-time rival that they did not expect to meet in a place like this in the bracket in your elimination semifinals. But Optic 1-0, as you say, FaZe needs to find a way back into the series in the Slayer and not let it get out of hand. I mean, there's two ways to look at it, right? You could argue they shouldn't be in this position. They'll feel hard done by that they are in this position, but it shows how well Sentinels and Space Station yeah. have been playing throughout this weekend as well. That we have the two teams that we've been talking about as the two top dogs for so long, all of a sudden find themselves in an elimination situation a lot earlier on a Sunday than they would have expected. But game number two, I think when we're focusing on, you know, things that are going to change the game, they're going to be game deciding. I'm always looking at that camo. I I'm you look at plays that were made yesterday with it, right? Formal, in that really, oh. really tight game towards the end. He was the last player alive, but he had camo, and he played it so well. Trippy, how many times have we seen him with the camo? Get that first one, two kills, and then go on a spree off the back of it. It's so vital for FaZe to keep it out of the hands of Optic because they have been playing so well when they get that power up in their hands. And one thing we saw in the last game as well, in game number one, is the patience out of Optic Gaming. They get themselves a lead on the scoreboard, and then Trippy could do things like where he's S1 with a repulse, and he knows the help is going to come from the angles. Same thing yesterday where we saw, as you said, formal bottom mid camo. He's the only one alive. He waits for three spawners, and then it's a perfect push. When Optic Gaming can play patient, and they can dictate the pace of the game, they are a very scary team, and that's when they're at their best. wonder what the pace of this game is going to be like, though. We do yeah. see recharge. Slayer really slow down sometimes with both teams kind of exchanging a half of the map. Or will it be a little bit of a strange one where we see the pace being picked up and the aggression being put on by FaZe to try and put the pressure back onto Optic Gaming. Off the rip, the first kill is going to go to FaZe. Lucy trying to provide a little bit of supporting cover here. But off the back of this as well, we're going to see three dead. And that should surely guarantee a camo going to phase. Unconventional opening here. One kill does go to the Optic Gaming, but Trippy applying that much pressure there on the Mango Door is a little surprising. It costs Optic in the end there on the play call. 4-2 here. Renegade, though, with camo and pings going down. He knows he can make these plays. He is now just rooming around, isn't it? UAV getting all the info to the team. And look how tight Optic are playing. They know that they don't have camo. They're waiting to see if they make a play off the back of it. Because if Renegade goes in here with camo, even if he gets a few shots down, and it isn't the clean kill. There's going to be a trade coming in from Optic. They know this. Ooh. And now the camo disappears no. at just the wrong time. But Frosty also has the cover. He has the shock rifle. All the toys here for FaZe. Good job there by Renegade. Pants come down, but he still manages to stay alive. This is not going to be easy. Oh. Pipes, though. Kills get traded out. Frosty escapes, though. Most importantly, with that grapple and with the shock rifle. So he can continue to keep Optic at bay from range. APG going to be challenging, gets singed a little bit, but that's a great push from Optic. They seize the opportunity to pounce, and it's Trippy again who makes the play. Oh, Snakebite doesn't know he's there. Trippy on the sneaky, has the help from C-Plat as well. Gets absolutely melted in the face by Renegade, though. Excuse me, Royal 2. Game now 8-7, to 9-7. to seven. Optic made an aggressive push there after damage was done, and they managed to get three dead, but FaZe have exchanged those kills pretty quickly, so a two-kill difference between the two teams. One player from Optic still stuck, over at blue and it was APG, but he bought enough time and he took long enough for the rest of Optic now to arrive. Formal trying to initiate this push and close this lead. A little bit of chaos here, two dead with camo Ooh. popping up. Kills will be traded, but keep an eye on bottom middle right now where this camo goes could really dictate this next few string of kills. Optic, last two players are trapped. Do they know where Frosty is? They do, but the repulse isn't good enough to send one of them off the map. So it's a kill that's gonna bring Optic a little bit closer. 13 to 10 as FaZe still have control, but what happened to that camo? Was it burnt on the map? Oh, Snake by now. Really here with the early game in his hands. They're up by three, and they can really extend this lead if they play this right. Form are going to be taken down. Trade does come out, though. Two camos in a row now for FaZe. Trippy just gets caught throwing that grenade, but gets the trade in that situation. And that's two camos in a row that FaZe have had. But I have to say, the strategy from Optic based around not having that camo has kept them in this game. Absolutely has, and like we said, Optic too aware of what can happen when you let the game get out of hand. We saw it last night, almost resulting in disastrous circumstances with them exiting early. They know they need to keep this game close. Now we are seeing that kind of divide on the map, right? Trippy trying to make the play to kind of break that 50-yard line. 
And Trippy will get that kill. APG trying to survive. Renegade will chase him down. So immediately, you're seeing kills being traded out between the two teams. Trippy again with another one. And Trippy in Slayers. I don't know what he's... Exactly why, but every time we seem to see him, he does something special this time. Can't quite connect, but 7 and 6 lead the way for Optic in this game. And not afraid to make the plays on the face setup. Optic keeping in here within two kills, as we saw earlier. It's a good chance to get into the comms here with Optic Gaming. See how they're going to get back into the lead. Sure. Two one shots, two one shots. Two one shots. I'm going to hold this right there. So there's a guy from Silo still, isn't there? Right at Longmall. Sure. So. Okay. They have a shock somewhere. Yeah, Camo's yeah, coming, guys. 15. Yeah, Camo. In a, in a. Yo, Yo, gold stairs, guys. Yeah, we need to get back out through, through long haul, guys. The one's in gold. Yeah, one's in gold. Yo, Brad, glass. come with me long haul. Come with yeah, me long haul. Here with you. Yeah, locate this shock. Okay, we have a spread here. Let's just... Go. Yo, we gotta guide one of us to camo, right? We just gotta back... Yo, two guys top A. They're just gonna bait him, brother. Neither, neither. Go, go stairs. Tommy, right here. Yeah, go stairs. Absolutely. We gotta pick Frosty. Yo, look at Frosty. Two top A. 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 Bait for Matt. Bait for Matt, guys. Neither, neither, neither. Watch neither. We have camo, guys. Just live up. Let Matt make a play. Go ahead, pipe door. Pipe door. Listen, go bat ledge with that camo, alright? We should, no, no, no. We let Matt do what he wants. Let's Bangor. Let's Bangor. Let's Bangor. Let's Bangor. Let's do whatever you want, Matt. I'm seeing glass. I'm seeing glass. I'm gonna get in the tower. They still have a shock. Yeah, they do. Right. Okay, once you're in the battle, make a play with that. Make a play with that. I'm gonna go out gold. I'm gonna go out gold. All right. All right. Just play off Matt here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a tower control here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go right, right, right now, going up. All right. Yo, two guys bottom elevator. They're all elevator, I think, bro. No, once you go back. Bottom elevator. Bottom elevator. Bottom elevator. Bottom elevator. Top floor on me. 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 Top floor Absolute gold stairs, guys. Absolute gold still. Absolute gold stairs still. Tommy, look gold stairs. I can't, I can't. There's two of them. Yo, see pot, see pot right now. See pot right now, bro. Look at that. Tyler, Tyler, up. Tyler, when you help me. There's a guy top cat. One guy elevator. One guy elevator. I played four, guys. Man, Tyler, 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 Long haul, long haul. Nice, man. Yo, still have to fight. Turbine, turbine, turbine. Grapple, he went grapple. He went grapple. Heard you, heard him. Yo, grapple. Look, battlers, I have an angle. I have an angle. Frosty, Bellage, one Frosty right now. Bellage, one Frosty. I'm fighting Matt, I'm fighting Matt. Yo, in heaven, Joey, turn around. I got nade, I got nade. Gold door, gold door, gold door. We're gonna have shock. Wait, we gotta get back to Joey. He has shock in gold door right now, Joey. Fuck gold door. I want to go. Fuck gold door going in. Absolute, absolute. Kill, kill. Well, the game pace is starting to pick up now. The camo, you thought the formal had everything lined up for him, but face bait him in again. Both teams being so good without the camo that neither can make a play with it at the moment. Yeah, really coming in off that listen and really the same kind of scoreline here. It's a three kill lead still for FaZe. You have to think Optic Gaming did not min max that camo the best they could have. Very surprising to see Formal come up gold stairs. They were also coming in through glass. They did not check that back Checking right weapon corners. corner. That corner did not get checked properly. It really broke the pipe push. So as a result, we will stay here with a two kill difference. APG trying to think about sneaking into the tower. Didn't know the Royal 2 was in that corner. I'm pretty sure the Lucid has the shock rifle. So now he can try and pick away a couple of phase players. This is what you need. This is the weapon that can bring it closer without having to take too many risks here for Optic. What can Lucid do here? We've seen him so many times blow games wide open. And now with the camo as well. Oh boy, this would be oh! devastating! They might be able to pick up the shock, but they will lose Lucid camo shock as an opportunity. What a play that was from FaZe, though. They managed to eliminate Lucid, oh but now APG picks up the pieces, and he eliminates Frosty. Look at that. Lucid doesn't pop camo. Lucid does not pop camo. Let's APG makes plays off of it. Oh, APG! That's the kind of play you need to make. It's 29 to 28, but the kill difference is just one. Two now a snake bite gets that kill onto Trippy, but APG oh! is taking this game over. Triple push here coming out. It's a full pipe push, full commit from FaZe. They've already baited two, oh. they've baited it three, it's a killing spree! And just like that, it's a one kill game. Oh, it's all tied up. 32-32, Optica back in this, and it's all thanks to APG. The pressure he was under while those shots had to be hit. You won't know it until you're in the position yourself with that control in your hand on the main stage, but boy, did he hit him. And of course, it's Trippy, who's 12 and 9 and a Slayer here, leading the game in kills. Back to a standoff between the two teams. You wonder if that shock rifle is going to be on respawn now or if someone's picked it up for Optic Gaming. They have control of the pipe side, so they're going to have the most access to it. Or are both teams, once again, set up here to battle for this camo coming up in 30 seconds. And look how things have absolutely slowed down to not just a crawl, but mutual respect for both sides. As you say, camo in 21. Tied here at 32, both teams so aware that their tournament lives are on the line. Neither one wanting to be the one that makes a mistake. Next camo coming up 10 seconds. He's going to make the play. What is the play call going to be? The power weapons? 
Well, the power-up, I should say, is going to be on the map right now, so everyone's going to be turning their attention towards that camo. Does anyone try and make a fight? Oh! It's Lucid! Of course it's Lucid with that shock rifle! Lucid doesn't just check the angle. He gets the first pick, but off the damage, they haven't made a play just Grapples yet. That will give a chance here for another grapple camo play. This time, Lucid will live to tell the tale. Trailing by one. Though, Renegade gets a stick on the big push coming in from Optic Gaming and manages to take two down. So now it's still... Phase in the lead by one. Lucid again with pressure on his shoulders. Has got to hit some shots before that camo disappears. You saw his pings down there. He's worried about Hydro. You could tell on his screen he's worried about that back Hydro player who's snake bite. And that's kind of not allowing him to really take angles into elevator. You could tell right now. They're aware that he's down here in tunnel. Let's see how they play this. Camo has dissipated. I'm pretty sure they don't know the snake bites here. I don't want to give the information away, but you can see that Trippy was trying to hunt him down. This is wild. And Snakebite, the king of screen watching himself, is waiting to pounce. Let's see how he plays this. Here he goes. Here's the flank from Snakebite. He's going to find one, and that blows the map open here for FaZe to try and pick up multiple kills. APG trying to stay alive, but the patience was so impressive from Snakebite. Now they're trying to hunt down Trippy. Two players still here from FaZe. And I think the Trippies decided to escape. Beautifully done there by Snakebite. And you could tell by Lucid's POV, he knew something was up at Hydro. He couldn't take the comfortable angles he wanted to, maybe from batteries, maybe from Trippy Spot or Glass to challenge A and Whirlpool. Sometimes you'd walk right in. It doesn't work out. Look at the patience from FaZe. Now they lead 37-33. Form are gonna fall as well. And now you're seeing that lead start to extend. All of Optic now stuck up a golden long haul. Renegade trying to poke in to get that entry damage. Snake by there to support him. And how this game has changed here with two minutes left on the clock. Camo popping up again in five. It's a very different landscape for this camo pop. With a six kill, seven kill lead here. FaZe can just look to trade and make sure they at least burn the camo. Well, Renegade's picking up kill after kill at the moment. Frosty gets another as well. It's going to open up the map and oh the boy. camo is grabbed by Renegade. So now he has the chance to make the play. And by making this play, might put this series at one to one. You got to think, really, this is just their opportunity. Renegade can make any play he wants here with 140 on the clock and a 43-35 lead anywhere he wants to I go. Mean, he's going to guarantee a trade here. He's got stickies. He's got repulse. He's got camo. He's got oh, a yeah. sidekick. As soon as he gets close, he's going to be able to do damage. And that damage, Formal's about to find it out himself. A killing spree for Renegade. He's looking for two, but Royal 2 is already there to assist. It's five to go now for FaZe. What beautiful late game composure coming in from FaZe. Honestly, making it look way too easy there. The patients coming in, the positioning, slowly picking apart the last few optic setups to now find themselves in the lead by seven with 60 seconds left on the clock. And as you can tell, they're just going to play this defensive gameplay. And you feel like it's a slogan that could go on a t-shirt at this point for FaZe. Late game composure. FaZe do it best in these tight slayers. Royal 2 gets one. Lucid, he'll be able to trade it out, but Frosty is there. Royal 2 is there. APG left on his own. He's going to fall as well. It's one to go for FaZe Clan. It has been a masterclass in Slayer gameplay. Who would have thought here, with the way this game was going, there would now be a 10 kill lead with one to go for FaZe. Royal 2 is going in. He wants that final kill. Can't get it himself. It's Renegade, who will pick up yet another to tie the series up at one to one. But so many pivotal moments, not just pivotal kills, but strategy that was better for FaZe in that Slayer that won them that game. It's hard not to think back to the formal camo push, right? And really not just on formal, but the entire Optic team to make sure that that pipes and gold push was effective. In the end, it wasn't. It was neutralized by great camo baiting and defense coming in from FaZe. You look again, second time it was APG with the shock. That was shut down. Then it's Lucid with the shock camo again, and Snakebite being a little bit sneaky there on bottom blue tunnel prevents any sort of push from coming in. It's just great countering. You saw, for example, just there alone, three camos that went to Optic. FaZe counters them perfectly and somehow wins the game by 11. It's really, really an incredible testament to how they play that game type. Yeah, I mean, there's so many moments you can pick out. Most of them did favor FaZe, the big moments, right? We saw Lucid with the camo shot. When he got taken down in Turbine, yes, APG managed to scoop it up, but he just gives freedom. Yeah. And, and you know, for FaZe to make plays off the back of it, this is the one here. He thinks he's safe. He's got the grapple. He's made the play call, but cannot escape. And even though APG went on a little bit of a wacky spree after this, you can see elsewhere the pressure that he's under. It opens the map for FaZe, not just for this set of kills, but the next ones as well. Also, we got to talk about Renegade's double kill there. It was off screen, but Renegade's double kill in the feed right around this mark. Stick. 
where it was looking like Optic Gaming was going to start to take the lead. And somehow, out of nowhere, Renegade shuts down the control, changes the man advantage here. This was that first camo pop. Lucid, once again, creates the opening, but they were not able to convert off of that. And before you know it, 38-33 phase. And then was it a breakdown in comms? Like you said, when we were watching Lucid's POV, he knew something was up. He yeah. knew someone wasn't accounted for. Trippy went on the... A little search party around back blue, couldn't find Snakebite. And then Snakebite with the flank again, just capitalizes on the damage and keeps FaZe in control of the game and with that lead on their side. 50 to 40 is the final score in game number two, but the series score is at one to one. And now Streets Oddball, the game type we were talking about on the couch before we got this underway, that's game three. This is the swing game and both teams have impeccable records. Wouldn't have it any other way. FaZe and Optic here, one to one in your first match of Championship Sunday. As you say, this is the go-ahead game as we jump into map number three. FaZe are going to be feel, feeling extremely confident after that win. Optic need to answer back. Renegade has to change his decision very, very quickly there as three players from Optic were in front of him. ABG is going to get these rockets, though, and he's going to find his first kill of the game. Power weapon control early, heavily in the favor of Optic Gaming. They have the red gun as well as the rockets, and ABG is just trying to bait this off ball. What a big game this is. So much riding on it. Going up two to one here would be absolutely massive. Rocket does not connect. Frosty and Renegade work together to neutralize that last rocket. Kills not recorded. I mean, it's just really good play from FaZe that. Again, just baiting the rocket out. Renegade's gonna be here. Shots coming from the B rail as well. We're gonna make his life very difficult to play, but he's doing so. Renegade's got that shotgun though. He's got that bulldog. It's gonna have to be magic here from Lucid, but he just didn't have the DPS versus that shotgun to win that fight. Frosty gets away with the odd ball into PD, but two players have fallen for FaZe here, even though he gets evened up almost immediately. What can Snakebite do here? This is big for Snakebite. This will be a hold if he gets taken down. This should be Optic Gaming with a little bit of time on the board. Constant pressure still coming in here from FaZe. It's kill after kill, it's push after push. They know because the damage is here that they have to try and capitalize on it. They can't let the rest of Optic get back on the map, but Optic have done exactly that now. So it's a strong PD set up here for Optic Gaming. This should be some time for them. Nice work here from Formal. The last thing you want is Formal with a spike, Stalker, and Shotgun anywhere on the map, but from PD right now, just anchoring all the angles that he can. Oop. Frosty rolls a sticky grenade in, but can't quite find Formal's body. Royal 2 should be dealt with, and he is, but he can't find Frosty. Frosty, the beautiful flank here, but needs to stay alive and needs to take down Lucid, and he can't do so at the moment. Renegade helps him out a little bit. The push from Pink is coming in now from Optic, but the rotate away is good enough from FaZe. See, Renegade spawned Caution? Pretty wild angle there to spawn to be able to help Frosty, who was back A. That's going to be a little bit of a thanking your lucky stars moment coming in. Formal, though, off the rack, picks up the first rocket kill. Formal on streets with these rockets. There's been some good clips throughout the... Uh, <laughs> History of Halo Infinite, and this might just be another one. Three dead here for FaZe. Optic realized that objective efficiency is going to be so vital. Two, three seconds in this game could be the difference when it gets to the end of these rounds. Maybe a, a thought of a rotate here, and I was thinking the same exact thing, and honestly felt like a blue room holds from Lockout Oddball, where it's just teams flying at each other obnoxiously, and neither one really wants to go back to PD, but Formal says, I've had enough of the PD holds. Let's start to move this ball a little bit closer to Tram. Royal 2 inside of that shroud. We're going to spray and pray, but not going to be able to connect. Beatdown does come in, though. A good trade from Royal 2 in that situation, considering that he was at a disadvantage for the majority of the fight. The Shroud certainly helped him change that. Lucid with the Commando swaps it out for the Sentinel Beam. Now Renegade trying to hunt him down. The pressure coming in. The distraction is enough for Trippy to move in, and the kills are starting to stack up here in the favor of Optic. How does Lucid play this? Two players still in tires. As now Rotate's going to come in. You can tell Formal's already getting to Neons. He's going to cut off Frosty. Really, really smart. They're going to try and overload this pink side. Frosty stays alive for just long enough, and Frosty somehow gets one. So even though the idea is great, that one frag grenade just stopped the push completely on the pink side from Optic Gaming. Another trade comes in now from Frosty. World 2 is going to wait for that Stalker to come up as well. He's going to grab it almost immediately, and the tram setup has been broken, and now FaZe have it. One of the best pure aims in the history of Halo with one of the most precision-based weapons we've ever seen. That was essentially a staggered four dead there. As you say, it's a great play from Frosty to cut off the Neons. Formal wanted to get into the action. He shut down. And the ball was actually played by Trippy, but FaZe caught it immediately, and they brought it right back into Tram for more time on the board. They lead 44-29. Game type that you know FaZe have been working on as well. It wasn't the strongest game type oddball historically, but they put that right for sure. As Formal is going to have to challenge against this Sentinel B, but here comes APG. A little bit of a bait and switch from the two Optic players. I mean, they get that kill onto Royal 2 and turn the weapons back over to Optic. APG going to hold down this angle. Ooh, the biggest assist comes in. That's three dead. Renegade's your last player alive. 
And again, as last alive, he's going to have to buy some time off to get this ball back into Tram once again. So you would expect a tie game, especially with Renegade being taken down first. So FaZe now have to buy time and wait for damage before they try and break this Optic Gaming setup. 43 on the board, 44 on the board. Optic Gaming will go into the lead here in your first round. Two minutes left on the clock. Here comes the push from B-Rails. Well, two trying to force things at the moment. You can see Renegade's trying to back him up as well, and we'll get one onto Formal. So the kills fall in the favor of Optic. And Excuse me, the kills fall in the favor of FaZe, which means that Optic now find themselves on the back foot with this hold. Renegade brings that ball back in once more, but APG can still do so much damage with his Stalker Rifle, and he's playing his life expertly here. What's he gonna do here? Doesn't take damage from the spike either, which is big. Now he could just maybe, with two dead, thinking about trying to get a kill here, should be able to on the Fern, Snake Bite with some good shots, that'll be traded out in the end, still two dead for FaZe. Really, really good play that from APG, just yeah. playing his life long enough for the rest of Optic to arrive and capitalize on the damage. It's a 55 point to 44 point lead here for Optic, and they still have that ball in the back of Tram. Now Trippy has to kind of try and do something similar to what we saw from APG a few moments ago. Buy some time, stay alive in Tram, and now scooping that op ball up, he's trying to run it towards his teammates. Wow, beautiful. The Shroud just gives him the cover to wrap around Commando perfectly, and guess what? He's gonna get the ball out as well, off of Gray slaying from the team. Royal 2 is the only player alive for FaZe as the rest come in to spawn. Renegade's just spawned as well, but they know where the spawners come in here, Optic, and they're trying to kill them as quickly as possible to keep them on those split spawns, but Renegade wins the important battle traded out immediately 72 points is the target here for phase optic have a commanding lead in this round Ooh, one they keep trippy alive as well that would mean still too dead snake bite is weak back a last player's caution Snake by trying to capitalize on the damage frosty trying to do so as well but here's the cleanup crew in the form of apg and formal hey. lose it with another it's three dead for phase and optic still have that ball in their hands Royal 2 is trying to make a play for the Rockets, but Trippy is going to be able to pick them up without damage. And if he can put the big sticks to use, then you would imagine that this will be a round going to Optic. Here come the Boom Booms. Renegade tries to fly through tires. Not going to happen. 92 on the board for Optic. This should be the round quite comfortably. As long as Trippy can hold off the push from FaZe, then Optic will go up by one here. They take the first round pretty conclusively, you would say. But the thing that stood out for me, Andy, is those rotates away from the pushes from FaZe. Love the pull out of PD to get that ball over to B. And I think everyone's kind of thinking the same thing. There's been a lot of this PD chaos and carnage. Not a lot of points on the board that were meaningful. So Formal pulls that ball out all the way to Tram, and it really paid off for Optic Gaming. Also, how about those last... They get four dead, and Lucid flies into Tram to kill Renegade as the fifth. Things like that are what paved the way for a 25-point run to close out the round. Should we get to get the Rockets? Royal 2. Wow, Royal 2 somehow, in combination with a couple of grenades and explosions... We'll make sure that he doesn't go down. The Stalker now in his hands once again. Formal going to find that out and give the information to his teammates to not push pink right now. And the oddball heavily and safely back tower here for FaZe. He's also got two spikes, which is massive. This could be a very big hold if they play this correctly. Let's see if they can defend. Bottom mid push coming in though. And now Royal 2 is going to be caught off guard. You can see Trippy's going to be there. Gets the trade at least, but FaZe, the setup just falls apart. Three dead for them, and Optic should be able to pick this ball up. Oh, Snakebite, last player alive on benches, and Lucid does so well to fly around and wrap benches. Snakebite, in a lot of situations, there could have done a lot of damage and kept things even. However, he's taken down immediately. There's that grab from APG, just waiting to see if the push came in on pink, but now he's going to move this one towards the teammates. The kills favor phase this time. Royal 2, the only player down for them. APG going to have to play this ball. He does have the Stalker to get some damage out, but just ran out of ammo and couldn't get that third shot into Frosty. Two dead for both sides here. Threat Seeker in the hands of Frosty. We haven't seen it be as effective as it can be in this game. Let's see if this one hits. Intel does come in. He sees Trippy there in the L. Assists come in as well. Great shots. That's the end. APG stays alive, but a lot of damage, a lot of intel. Frosty wanted to go for the ball grab, but it was denied. Renegade picks up the kill, and the damage onto APG and the information that Lucid was there as well means that FaZe should be able to comfortably rotate this ball away. Frosty, with that challenge, got not just damage in, but like I say, information on where those last two players would be. So FaZe can set up around where those spawns will be expected to come in. And now Frosty making a little bit of a flank play, but he's going to be caught out himself here. Shroud screen is down. Rockets are on the map, and it's Renegade who's found them for FaZe. Two dead does not get to burn the rocket either. A delayed three dead here. Royal 2, last player alive. Lucid with the ball in his hands as well, and Royal 2 nowhere near to put pressure on. He's going to be sniffed out here by Trippy as well, and Royal 2, first up, first down here for FaZe. Shot, shot, boop from Trippy. Says you cannot come into the tires, you'll be kept in the laundry. 11 points separating the two. Even less now as Optic continues the comeback, and still two dead for FaZe. It's looking like it's going to be a lead change here for Optic as well. 
29 points and rising. Optic go into a lead. They already have one round in the bank here. So remember, if Optic win this one, they will go up two to one in the series. And FaZe will know it more than anyone. Let's also not forget FaZe right now, just in case you're just joining us. Defending champions have won the last two LAN events here. And conclusively, to exit here would be heartbreak to say the very least. A lot of series, of course, still yet to play. 42-31. Trippy still alive. Trippy oh, get the oh, trade there. Oh. And Optic two dead and Renegade comes away with that ball. Now Frosty staying alive in Tram. If he can deal with APG, opens up a rotate on either side because all of the spawns from Optic are coming in in and around Arcade and Red Room. So where these kills go down is where Renegade is going to move that ball. And you can see Snakebite is doing a great job of Royal 2 to clear out PD and Optic... Having been in the lead for quite some time, now we're chasing the game once more. You can tell there, Trippy just as surprised as the rest of us here as Renegade gets away with that. Somehow pulls the ball out as well. 60 to 42 now. It's been a long stretch here from FaZe. Really, really good stretch this from FaZe. And now Royal 2 might be on the flank behind. He's trying to check if those tram spawners are going to be there, but instead going to play tight with the rest of his team. Wait for the push to come in, and now the call to rotate, and the bait. It's what oh he my. does best. Royal 2 playing in the corner. Finds the kill to allow Snakebite to escape. Ends up baiting the bait there. A little bit of mind games, three dead. Frosty, last player alive in Tram. If he could stay alive here, will be big. He does get the trade onto Trippy, but Otsby have the ball back in their favor. Now, where are the phase spawns? Are they in position to try and challenge for these rockets? Well, Lucy cleared the way. And that means that APG can get those rockets. Fires one off. Two dead still here for phase and Optic still with the ball in their hands. Forced to trade. One rocket is down laundry. We'll keep an eye on that as well. Royal 2 trapped in a horrible position here, and Trippy going to aggressively challenge. And now, much like we saw in the previous round, Tyres is not the place to go here for FaZe because the Rockets deny the push. Lucy can't finish off Renegade oh! now, but he does the second time around. And Optic go into a lead once more. Renegade comes back for more, and Lucid was aware of the double back and snaps on to get that kill as a Let's Go Optic chant erupts in the room. Optic fans starting to believe this could be a 2-1 to one series score in just a few moments' time. Renegade gets dumpstered in that long-range BR fight. Lucid puts more damage onto Royal 2 as the points keep stacking up here for Optic. Love that play from Lucid. He knew he was going to die, but he just... Perfect damage! Look at that play and that collapse from Optic Gaming. Love what I'm seeing here. All four players are on the same page. Another kill. It's three dead for FaZe. It could be four in a few seconds. Everybody falls for FaZe. And Formal grabs that ball, but the Red Room spawn. And Royal 2 managed to get up onto that b row and get some sort of line of sight onto the oddball to make Optic wait. Notice how Lucid there Royal knew... Royal 2 again! Knew he was going to die. Sets up a perfect Optic collapse. The work is not done, though. They're 15 points away. They'll need to do it again to close out the round. Well, somehow, Royal 2 has pretty much saved the game. And he's got another kill onto APG. Royal 2 finally dealt with by Formal, but... Look at how this map has just changed off the back of those kills from Royal 2. Absolutely huge. And you thought Optic was maybe going to start to run away with it. To be honest, they got greedy on the damage and the kills. And just like that, the game now within five points here. 85 to 80. Renegade gets one as well. Ball is going to be rotated into Tram. 85 points to the target. Here for FaZe Clan to try and overtake to get into that lead. Lucid front of Tram. The Rocket's coming up as well. Royal 2's trying to hold off so many players, he gets one, but can he deny the pickup here? APG oh. turns, he burns, he gets two, but where is that oddball? It's a one point advantage here for Optic, as phase of four, dead. APG with the fadeaway pre-fire there to hit the tires rocket, beautifully done. Of course he turns two on the B-stairs as well, 94 points on the board. Trippy gets the first kill, and this could be Optic going up two to one in the series. Lucid just has to watch the points rack up. Optic close out streets up ball two to zero and got two one in the series. Man, you can just tell Royal Two and Tires knew he was surrounded. Lucid just dings them there from C stairs. He can't get an APG flash bottom middle for rockets. Even though Royal Two picks up one, APG with the beautiful 180 free fire rocket to not just pick up one but pick up two paves the way for Optic Gaming to get the last 15 points they needed. These four players looking very strong here. They take the series lead two to one. APG is playing some great Halo in this series so far. We saw some of the shots he was hitting on recharge that gave Optic hope. Well, that rocket that connected there has given them an opportunity essentially to close the series out in this next game. One more to go here for Optic, and they will eliminate FaZe. The scary thing for them is knowing FaZe's map five record. We always talk about it. If FaZe send it to a map five, FaZe will feel confident.
Without a doubt. I gotta point out one thing as well while we have a second to breathe. Just one second as we'll get right into this next game right away. Take a look at the series layout here. Optic Gaming does take the lead. Two to one, as we said, as we get ready for live fire strongholds. One thing I gotta point out though, that's really unique to Halo Infinite. You saw Lucy get a kill on spikes, and he continues to challenge Royal 2 and back tram, knowing he will die. In previous Halo games, that was not always the play you would make, but take note of Lucid challenging to the death on Royal 2, and I'm getting chills thinking about it because it was so perfectly timed. Then all three players off the damage at Neons flood tram like lunatics, and they team shot. Uh, in the back of Tram, pick up the kill on Royal 2, and then they continue to maintain a slaying advantage. It's crazy coordination and timing pushes like that from Optic Gaming that won them that game, and we'll see if they can do it again here in game number four. Well, Strongholds is the game type. 250 points to win this one on live fire, and good news is for both teams, neither of them are playing Quadrant. At the moment because it's chalked if that is the case, but for Optic, the opportunity to close out after being you know, in such turmoil for the last two events. A lot of talk about the roster, what's gonna happen? Well, all gets forgotten about here if they knock FaZe out of the tournament with a three to one win here, but they've gotta make sure they get the job done here and not worry about that game five. That's right, here we go, ladies and gents. Formal sniper rifle in hand early. Optic Gaming, one game away from eliminating FaZe, your current reigning oh. champions from the tournament. Can they do it here in map number four? It's three dead. Renegade, the only player alive for phase. This should be an optic overshield. Shrouds it as well. And Formal looking to give a few more phase player headaches with a couple of sniper rifle bullets. Looks like Trippy did get taken down. Did the overshield get scooped up? Yes, it did. It's Lucid who gets it. Pressure here by FaZe, though, trying to eliminate it. It's a BC hold off the rip here for Optic. But it's all about this overshield. And Lucid, I don't know how he's alive right now, but finally gets taken down. In the end, as you say, Optic Gaming still able to get that overshield. Trippy thought you might get it clean. However, Lucid makes sure to take it as well. Look at this, avoiding the slam. No, no, oh my God, there he is. <laughs> oh my, ankle breaking, world star making juke from Trippy. Renegade's still looking for him. He doesn't know where he was coming from. And to be fair, the last place you want to look on Halo Infinite when you come out of the door is 20 feet above it. Formal still with this sniper rifle. Optic still scoring. They are 50 points to the good here. Phase yet to register a single point. I'm not gonna lie, you can't be doing that in the main stage. You cannot be hitting the world stars like that. Oh! On main stage, Formal heating up as well. That bullet's got brains on it. Formal takes down Snakebite for the second time in this game as the Optic fans start to get loud here. 71 to zero here. I'm getting word from the authorities that we cannot show things like that in the state of Utah on broadcast. Finally, phase will break, A, B, hold, they get some points on the board. Now, Optic will know better than anyone in this game, and Optic fans should know better than anyone that on Life Fire Strongholds and Strongholds in general, when we saw best teams going up against each other, it's not a case of Strongholds being flipped, you know, con consistently between the two. It's usually a 50-point run or more if a team gets control, and an opportunity to get control has now presented itself to face. Snakebite has won the battle for that next overshield. It's one to one between the two teams for overshield pickups, and the score is rising now with an AB hold for face. Snakebite keeps a little bit of overshield as well, and the heat wave. We've seen him do so much damage with this. Picks up another kill. That'll be two dead here for Optic and a chance for more points on the board and a threatening trip cap coming in from FaZe. They're right back in this game. FaZe are back in this game and Optic are three dead as well. And this is bad, bad news for Optic because they can be cycled. They could be put in a blender right now if they can't get back on the map. APG is going to be taken down, but Renegade falls as well. So Snakebite's going to have to play this one a little bit slower. He's going to have to play this one a little bit sneaky. Steps in that stronghold and now he's got the flank on three Optic players. Good shots are coming for Snakebite. Knows he needs to stay alive, but the sandbag pressure comes in as well, so he gets taken down, resulting in two dead for Faze. Optic have done a phenomenal job there. Phenomenal job. Three dead, no control, triple cap, and they come out of it not only with kills in their favor, but turning the scoring back in their favor. It's 81 and rising as now Faze make their play on B. It's a really big deal because you think if a few moments there went differently, it certainly could have been a Faze trip cap and Faze more points on the board as APG connects yet again. Oh! and he somehow hits the no-scope melee in a single frame to get the trade on A as well. APG, for me, one of the standouts so far in this series. Formal gonna push C here, flip it back. FaZe trying to defend B while another player is given the responsibility of turning A back in their favor, but responsibility of these shots is all Formals. He's hitting some really crispy BR battles at the moment. 
two dead here for FaZe. What can they do? It looked like once again, it was going to be momentary control for FaZe. It gets shut down by a great pillars push from Formal. He gets the help he needed on B as well. And up to gaming will continue scoring. Overshield now the priority for both teams. You can see Formal trying to control the key door. Royal 2 was there. Royal 2 will survive. And now the flank from Snakebite means it's a 2v2 on the map. Optic trying to control it. And with the Shroud, will be able to do so. It's 2-1. And the Overshield battle is loose. It tries to flood. Big, big place here. It's so technical. It's so textbook coming in from Optic Gaming. A perfect shroud, a perfect position. The Slays come in and they grab that overshield as well. Not only the trip cap in effect, but Lucid still with about 75% overshield to play with as well. Yeah, Lucid can really put the pressure onto FaZe here. He can just run at them. He can just be aggressive. He can just try and find bodies. Snakebite's going to fall here to a teammate. And now he's going to try and keep that triple cap rolling. C is going to get turned back into the favor here of Optic. Unless Renegade can do something crazy! Somehow keeps C in control. However, look at the damage that's been done here for Optic Gaming. They're leading 150 to 71. Only one game away from closing it out. Let's get into a listening here with Optic Gaming. Yeah, yeah, we bully, 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 bully. I got an ace. I got an ace. Shoot, still weak and beef. You can go back. Still hiding in the inside. Hiding in the inside. Hiding in the inside. Pushing back. Still in the inside. In the tube. In the tube. Looking. Absolute. Nice guys. Go. One shot. Nest bridge and then mud. Pillars with heat wave. Pillars with heat wave, guys. Pushing. One shot. One shot. One shot. Back B. 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 Back What's the guy? Well, one, 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 one. He might do the jump. He might do the jump. Hear that, hear that, hear that. Uh, he's here doing the jump now. Weak, weak, weak. Yeah, have I'll shield. Bottom tower, bottom tower. I see him. Do not see him. Still here, still here. Challenge, challenge. Climbing. He's one he's bullet, top tower, guys. One bullet, top tower. He's nice, jumping nice. down. Elbow, dropping elbow. Dropping elbow. Two here, three here. I'll see him. Oh, that's the same guy. Yeah, elbow, kill me. Elbow, kill me. Nice, Matt. Oh, that's good. OB, guys. OB. Yeah, live forever so we can play this. Two cuts, Matt. Two cuts going down. Fight this together. Fight this together. Two cuts going down. Yeah, two guys. They're just sitting on cuts. They're sitting on cuts. They're setting up for a smoke push. Cuts, 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 cuts. Make the pushy, make the pushy. Make the pushy, make the pushy. Go for it. Let's push it. I have shields, I have shields. I didn't get him. He's one shot. Half shields, guys. Key door, key door, key door. Get a weak roll too. Get a weak roll too. Back to OS. Get him down. Out of us. Out of us. He's going to push you. He's just going to run it. He's going to run it. I'm dead. I'm dead. Throw it off again. I can't camp. Cyber. Okay, okay. In A as well. They have a sniper. Half shields in A. Half shields in A. We're going to need to get kills guys. We come out of the Optic listening, but it's FaZe taking over. And as we heard the comms of Optic, FaZe, we need to jump into theirs right now because this triple cap is stifling Optic. Hey, Sean. Sean. <laughs> oh, yo, one more PJ, 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 PJ. P guys, where is it? Wanna pick PJ? On oh, the right, wait, on the back piece, still one. Hey, nothing else on PJ? So he's one in the back piece. They're gonna spawn guards, they're gonna spawn guards. They're in A, they're in A. Am I collapsing A? Yes, 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 small doors, PJ. I'm weak, I'm weak, I'm weak. One in, one in small door, one in small door. Big door one, big door one. Yeah, hold the two, hold the two, hold the two. I'm perfect, I'm perfect, I'm perfect. I'm back, I'm back. I'm snipe, guys, I'm snipe. Hey. One in cross, PJ? Nice. Can you push that, PJ? Push that. I'm gonna push him, I'm gonna push him. Trippy does have a heat wave, guys. Yo, bottom mid, bottom mid, bottom mid, rats on him. Rats on him, rats on him, rats on him. I'm on ammo, I'm on ammo. Yo, John, worry about your left, worry about your left, worry about your left. Keep finessing. The other one's weak, man. Yo, we can A, 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 get him melee. No, I didn't, he's half, he's half. Or kind of, kind of weak, kind of weak. He's going tunnel, Brad, tunnel, he's weak, tunnel. Still tunnel, 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 the calls from FaZe are perfect. They are constantly rotating on Optic at the moment. Optic can't get three players, four players back on the map. And with 237 points and rising, we might be looking at a game five here. This is unbelievable. What a run here coming in as the overshield pops. Royal 2 should be able to grab it clean as well. He does, hasn't even popped it yet. Home stretch here for FaZe. Just about getting
the time that it took for Royal 2 to find fights to get involved in battles allowed Optic back on the map. And now this next set of kills is huge. If it goes the way of Optic, they could come back here. If it's phase, they could close it out. I couldn't agree more. These next few kills will truly decide it here. First two here being traded out in favor of Optic Gaming. Optic are gonna this start to big. believe again here. They're gonna start to believe again here. C gets reset, but AB is good enough to score. Late C reset. They should be able to take down Frosty. Once they do, they should start C as well. Now, presumably, we'll see an A flip already happening. Yes, indeed. There is... will be an AC flip. It's going to be all about the battle for B here. APG has top middle lockdown with that sniper rifle. The sniper could be the difference. If he hits one shot here, one body, one headshot, the game opens up completely in the favor of Optic. They can hold B and C so, so much easier. This has been a 50 point run for Optic Gaming. Two for Optic. Now they're only 10 points away from tying the game. Formal versus Royal 2. Royal 2 will win it. APG trying to keep the pressure on. Hits the body, does he? No, he doesn't. And Royal 2, once again, trying to do everything here for FaZe. He finds two kills. Renegade gets another. Three dead for Optic and Royal 2 again. Almost individually keeps him in this game. The reset comes in. The Formal's your last player live here for Optic Gaming. Keep an eye on Formal. AP now in favor. A tie game here at 239. This is crazy. One more hold. That's all they have to do here. FaZe need to stop the desperation attempt. They get the kills. Lucid last alive. And we're going to a game five. Unbelievable. Let's not forget Optic Gaming was leading in that game about 137 to 70. And FaZe puts together not only perfect pushes, but in the end also perfect triple caps to go on a 150 or so point run. Largely uncontested. And it's a late game composure. How about Royal 2? Staying How alive at B. Two, man. How about Royal Last 2? Last player alive, stays alive at B, gets the kill on the B boxes, somehow buys the team enough time to come in, do the damage, and get the job done. It's not easy. When you are tied 239 to 239 in a match like that up against Optic Gaming, the amount of coordination you need to close out that game, it's unbelievable, but they do it here. They win game four, and they send us to a fifth and final game, do or die between these two. That's when your communication has to be perfect, right? It has to be about what is our play, and everyone has to com commit to it 100%. If one player tries to do something off script, he gets taken out. The game is optics, but it's phase with that late game composure again. I said put it on a t-shirt. Well, if you needed something to sell it, well, this game is another great example Optic was such a good start here, but these final moments, it's all about Royal 2. Big win there from Royal 2. Take a look at this. Now, APG here, he gets a look at this, strange hit marker there. And now he just stays alive as long as he can on Nestbox. Trippy, it's still a 2v1. In the end, though, Royal 2 somehow wins the 1v1, isolated 1v1. And even though the second 1v1 is also a 1v2, he isolates both battles perfectly to allow for Snakebite off the spawn to cap B. I mean, you hope it's an observer glitch for APG. That whip of the no scope, he probably thought he had the shields. We don't know what he saw on his screen, of course, but it's going to mean that Royal 2 could make that play. And then Optic just had no time to get near that hill. I tell you what, SLC, we have been treated to some incredible series of Halo throughout this weekend. Some of the best, I think, series after series we've had all year long. And now we head to yet another game of five. Optic have won a couple of these. They certainly have. But FaZe have probably won more historically. They have, especially this season, if we look at the last few months of play. Optic on your screen here. They've already been through three Game 5 gauntlets this weekend. 3-2 over Native Red. Sentinel's matchup ended 2-3, and SSG as well being a 2-3 matchup. They are no stranger to these Game 5s. And as we said, most recently, just last night, in a late night bout, on a Saturday at Elan, a place they don't expect to be, they had to still topple Native Red and dig deep to do it. Question is, are they going to let themselves get into that harrowing of a circumstance? You have to think for Optic fans, hopefully not. Slayer Aquarius will be the game type. Optic, very good at this. FaZe have obviously had a couple of wins, but also I've seen FaZe lose this a few times. So for Optic, I think you have to keep in mind how good you are at this game type, not the situation. Play it as a one-off, one map of Halo to keep your tournament alive. For FaZe, it's about doing what they do best. It's about winning another nail-biting series in the final moments. I got a chance to talk to Stinkbite last night. We talked about this series. We talked about the game types in the series itself, and he said, Slayer Aquarius, I feel good about it. And if that's any indication, they might be ready to play here. Let's start things off here. Game number five between FaZe and Optic. This is do or die elimination bracket. The series that never disappoints between these two. 
It's almost sad that we have to send one of them home at this point in the tournament, but for one of them, what a confidence boost it will be as they make that elimination bracket run. Off the break here, it's going to be Optic with the first two kills. QT's up, almost going for it. Nice baiting and switching here, coming in from Optic. Face is forced to rotate here, all the way to the util. Snakebite trying to be baited, and baited perfectly. Royal 2 gets that kill. Oh boy. There's a second one for him as well, but there are only trades at this point. However, a triple would be quite nice. The QT available, and Formal escapes, but Royal 2 stays alive. And there comes Formal, it's not just one, Look it's at two. Him. He's a ghost, he QT's back, back again to pick up both kills. And that QT usage off screen from Formal now gives them a six to two lead. And that is a huge open and a huge, huge maximization of that QT to start the lead for Optic Gaming. Formal is a master of the QT. He really is playing it so well at the moment. And now he's swapping it out for a new thrust. So three charges left on the thrust. Formal will be looking to get involved in a few individual battles, knowing he has that equipment to play with. Look how much FaZe has slowed this down. They know. One more spawn rotation, and this gets very, very ugly and very dicey. They're playing this so slow, so careful. They want to get the opening damage. Well, here goes. But look! Here comes the push. And the reason the push is here is because he's got that thrust. He knows he can do damage. The shot grenades go in as well. Lucid moves in to clean up that damage. Face still trapped. They've all taken damage here, but somehow they're still alive. And now Form was thinking about maybe backing out of here. Face somehow held on. Face just doing really well to make sure those kills are traded out. Look at Snake still being so slow. And they bait and switch once again. 2v2 on the map. It stays at 6 to 9. Ooh. World 2 does not get what looked like it could have been a back whack on the angle. Now 7 to 10. Renegade's trying to clean up this damage, and Renegade will. So now we're seeing a little bit of map control here for FaZe. Again, baiting in Optic and doing a great job to trade in what seemed like a really disadvantageous position, not just with weaponry, but with grenades, with equipment. And they managed to keep this close. They somehow traded their 6 to 2 in that exchange when they were trapped in the back of their base. That's unbelievable defense from FaZe. And they keep this game close. That's what you have to do. That's why we saw so much discipline and so much patience coming in from them. And just like that, it's a one kill game. Two players gonna be spotted out as well. Frosty got that kill onto Trippy. You saw Trippy was isolated, top pink, as Frosty had managed to escape. So he's gonna keep doing damage here. Formal knows he can't push because of the weapon that Renegade has. Now the flank comes in from Royal 2. It's perfect from FaZe. Again, they are setting the traps for Optic and they keep stepping into them. Perfect is the only word for it. The collapse is, look at this. He still has sidekick thrust. Renegade is jumping in, pop, pop, pop with the sidekick. He thrusts out. We just saw him do it three times. And just like that, FaZe turns what was a 6-2 game into a 13-13 game here, all tied up. Lucid's got that heat wave though, and we know the heat wave on this map, especially in the hands of Optic players, can be the thing that starts crazy runs, but Renegade's on the hunt at the moment. He finds Formal. Trippy's gonna be next, maybe. That's a double kill for him. 17 to 13 now. This is an unbelievable run here from FaZe Clan as they now lead by four after trailing by four early on. Lucid did get away though, and he had that heat wave. So even though they got the three kills, it probably wasn't the one they really wanted to find. But Frosty has managed to turn the heat wave back over. So somehow or other, it looks like FaZe get control. And they keep the weapons in their hands. It's 17 to 13. Here comes the optic push. Frosty just decides to get out of pink. And now with a four kill lead, let's see what FaZe has up their sleeves. Let's get into a listen in with FaZe Clan. Yeah, 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 I got him, I got him, I got him. I'm trying to let go. Yo, uh, thrust should be Go to John, go to John. I'm one hit, Brad, I'm one. Okay, no, 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 Yo, quad up now, guys. Quad yeah. up now. Does that have really good, have awesome. really good defense? Have yeah. really good defense. Yeah, I have heat wave and thrust. Yeah, they're, they're gonna make no, a really no good easy play. deaths here. Okay. Carthy, Carthy, Tommy, he's getting angles. He's getting angles. Yeah, he's Carthy. Yeah, yeah, John, John, make sure. Matt, you're okay. solo. Make you're sure solo. Matt, okay. Matt, they love going. They love going triple car. Tapi, Tapi, dating me, Brad, and then another Pew Street. Matt, you wanna walk car after double Street? One yellow bridge. One yellow bridge. Tapi, guys, we have three thrusts. We should consider hiding. Tapi, Tapi's hiding. Yeah, they're straight. They're straight. They're straight. They're gonna be Tapi on you. Two, two here. Get him, man. Get him, man. Nice, man. Oh, that was me. That was me. Right, I'm top here. I'm top here. He's Hard yellow one. Peter. Yellow Peter. Yellow one. Nice. Yellow Hard Peter. Yellow Peter. Hard Hard watch out. Watch out. Go on. Kill this kid. Kill this kid. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Nice. nice. Matt, live. Matt, live. Uh, There's a guy yellow. yellow thrust. Yes, yes, yes. Kill this guy yellow. He might be injured. Yeah, he's one. He's one. 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 Base. We have heat wave, yeah? Base. We can guys, guys, yeah, let's guys, 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 gu
Well, you know what FaZe think about Optic when they have to push. <laughs> Renegade makes his point, and it's kind of being shown here. 24 to 17, the score, but here comes a push now from Optic. Trade from Royal 2, two dead for Optic, and now it's going to be evened up a little bit. This cushion is getting a little bit more plump as far as the scoreline is concerned. Frosty was your last player alive, and he picks up a very pivotal kill that also forces the squad spawn there for Snakebite now, 27 to 19. Perfect play over those last few exchanges from FaZe, and it really started with that first four dead. Beautiful collapse on Util, as we said, from Renegade with the sidekick thrust. That blew the game wide open. They still lead here by eight. The positioning here from Frosty, really good. He's fully aware of what he has to play with. Two thrusts, two shocks, heat wave. Anyone pushes him inside of that closet, you know he's going to be able to get a trade with the talent that he has. And certainly, even if two trade, getting multiple players down weak. So at 27 to 19, now he's just trying to survive. Thrust gets him out of a situation once more. And Optic, you can see they just don't really have anything to push with apart from those battle rifles. Really well done there by Frosty. You can see he actually just saw APG's ankles and knew to back down. That's how he got out of dodge just perfectly in time. Two tap there with the thrust. He will trade as well with APG now. 28-21. Trippy trying to push. Renegade says no. Doubling up. Oh boy. And now four more. Oh, Renegade! With a little thrust in action. He's going to give himself a double kill. 30 to 21, a nine kill difference between the two. This is nightmare fuel for uh -oh. Optic fans. Renegade with the sidekick uh -oh. and the thrust. Name a more devastating combo as the lead extends for FaZe Clan even further. They are trapped. They are three dead. Optic already under pressure from Renegade. Halfway up the map, complete map control for them. And now with this sidekick, you know he wants to push. He's got two thrusts as well. He can get in, he can get out. We've just seen what he can do with this combination. Peeking through the iceberg lattice here. Nice little cheeky angle between the leaves. Just gonna wait and hold courtyard. There he goes. Gets the kill onto Trippy as well. My thrust is better than yours, he says. And now he looks to continue this run. 23 kills as Formal picks up one for Optic. That gap is still monumental. It's huge with the talent on this team. Frosty gonna try and take down four more. He will do so. And these trades just keep falling the way of FaZe. Optic have not been able to handle it. It has been FaZe dictating the game since that early collapse. 36 to 24 now. Renegade's 10 and six. Royal 2's 11 and seven. And Frosty's now 12 and six. We might be watch watching and witnessing the best game five team of all time. They just don't lose them, it feels like. 24 to 37. Optic are gonna try and upset that. Well, the three-man push on the pink side, but Renegade again with that thrust can just escape so easily. It has to be said, if Optic Gaming slow this game down right now with 4.14 left on the clock, it is not impossible. But it is an unbelievable task to try to get back into this game here. FaZe is going to continue to look to trade. Trade they do, you see. Look at the kill feed. Formal picks up one, Royal 2 trades out immediately. Now the collapse is coming in. Lucid taken out, no trade for Optic. Thrust is going to be up in the courtyard as well, and it's 10 kills to go now for FaZe for yet another Game 5 victory. They have made it look way too easy here. It's too quiet. The Renegade just picks up a freebie there, bottom middle. Going to just fly at pink as well. Melee damage does not come in. The solo have to slow things down, but still, it is just, look at how FaZe Clan's controlling every corner of this map. I mean, They've Opt always had players on both sides of pink I mean, or Opt both sides of util. Optic are just looking a bit lost at the moment. You can see they get picked off one by one. They know they can't trade, so they're trying to play tight, but FaZe is too good. And with the map control they have, it means they have access to nades. It means they have access to thrust, and it's such an uphill battle for Optic to try and get back into this one. Renegade picks up another. Frosty trying to stay alive. Should be able to do so. At least gets a beat down. Lucid picks up that kill, but Royal 2 just waiting to clean things up. Still two dead for each side here. Optic Gaming is likely going to spawn in the back of the base together. Can they try to get something together? And they've slowed it down. A moment to breathe here. 44 to 32. But as we said, this should be all too easy for FaZe to continue to trade. Optic Gaming would need to have a series of three essentially one-sided battles just to tie the game up. Snakebite. Positive, uh, excuse me, negative two in this game, but 12 assists for his team. Lucid's got the heat wave, which might be the only way back into this. Now, the thing about this map is we know there's some crazy comebacks if you can get a four dead, but FaZe, you just don't see it happening because of how efficiently they've been trading. It's not happening at 46, you gotta think. No room for error here and no opportunity, if you ask me, with 229 left on the clock at this kind of scoreline. FaZe knows it, Optic knows it. Now, just really a matter of time here as they look for their last four kills. Trippy will bring it one kill closer, but one kill is not going to do it here for Optic. Trippy gets another. And now Trippy puts the pressure onto Snakebite. Just playing his life smartly at the moment. Lucy trying to finish it off, but Royal 2, he's in that fridge. Lucy gets another. Oh my goodness, what's happening here then? 48 though, two traded out though. It might have kept things interesting if those two kills weren't traded out. Renegade's your last player alive for FaZe. However, 
with two dynamos as well. They only need two more kills to close out this game and eliminate Optic Gaming from the tournament. Formal gonna be in the back base. Renegade takes no damage, waits beautifully for that grenade as well to make sure he's full shield as he tries to re-engage. Trippy trying to chase this down. The 49th we Renegade. The only question left is who wants the 50th here for FaZe for another game five win? Renegade on the hunt, but can he find it? I'm gonna check bottom middle. Three players there from Optic oh, though. Out of there. No answer just yet. You gotta think, matter of time. 1.30 left on the clock. 49.42. Optic have given it their all here in the fans. Are trying to give them all of their energy. Formal's gonna walk in and he gets one, but can he survive here? That's the question. What? APG gets one. What on earth has just happened in the last few moments? Look at the confidence out of Formal. Are you kidding me to hit those two taps? And that's it. All it took was one more spawner. And that's it. With that kill, FaZe Clan will advance on and eliminate Optic Gaming from the tournament. The kings of game fives. They just don't lose them. And Optic Gaming will lose a game five here that will end their tournament in Salt Lake City. FaZe continue to look for the three feet. The road is long, but at least they're still walking. That's right, the hopes are still alive. My goodness, what a series here to start off our championship Sunday on the main stage. E Classico, these two teams always putting up a great fight, but especially at this point in the season, it felt like it meant even more. Yeah, it really does. Getting towards the back end of the season for Optic now, what's next? That's the question for them. How do they go away from this tournament? How do they rekindle that magic that we know that they have in this roster? And those questions are gonna have to be answered in the final two events of the year, but for FaZe, we need to focus on them because the comeback we saw, in that strongholds, the ice in that strongholds in the end as well. And then this performance, and I gotta say, it got very dicey towards the end. It was lucky they had the cushion they did, because yeah. Optic, they made a hell of a run. That's what you have to think. Did Optic wait just a little bit too long to get into their 110% disciplined composure? Because look at what Optic did at the end of the game. About nine or 10 kills that they traded for one or two. It's an unbelievable stretch of play. And we saw it on screen, but like you said, they left no room for error. And they let the game just get a little bit out of reach and the game will end 50-44. So FaZe carry on. This is the series, this is what went down. Of course we had a game five. Every single time we seem to step on the mic this weekend, we've had a game five. Three won the first game, Optic took it. FaZe managed to level things up and it was Optic with a lead. They just needed one of those last two games, Andy, but they couldn't find what they needed to close out the series. It, it's such a tough thing to do to beat FaZe. And I think yeah. it all also gives a, a little bit more kind of weight to what Sentinels did yeah. a little bit earlier in the tournament. But for now, that's gonna do us. We're gonna go down to the main stage. Royal 2 is on standby with Blaze.